SpaceX has finally secured approval from the FAA to launch its massive Starship vehicle into orbit. The company was previously restricted from performing tests after the FAA cited environmental concerns near the test site. In today's video, let's talk about how the company secured this orbit and when the Starship could launch. Will the massive craft be able to make it into orbit? Starship and Super Heavy are the biggest, most important pieces of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlements within reach at long last. With the development of the Starship, SpaceX has opened a new world of possibilities for space travel. With its powerful engines, efficient fuel system, and revolutionary landing system, the Starship is set to revolutionize the way we explore the final frontier. Whether it's a mission to the moon, Mars, or beyond, the Starship is ready to take us there. A senior SpaceX director expects the United States Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, to grant a license for the first orbital launch of its next-generation Starship rocket any day now. Speaking at the 2023 Space Mobility Conference, SpaceX Senior Director of National Security Space Solutions Gary Henry also indicated that Starship remains on track to launch at some point this month. SpaceX has made significant progress towards Starship's first orbital launch attempt in early 2023. On January 23rd, Ship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 were filled with around 4,800 tons of propellant and completed Starship's first full wet dress rehearsal, simulating a launch attempt up to the moment before engine ignition. Two and a half weeks later, SpaceX attempted to ignite all 33 of Booster 7's Raptor 2 engines. 31 engines ignited as planned, producing 3,580 tons of thrust the most powerful static fire test in the history of rocketry. SpaceX and CEO Elon Musk have been relatively quiet about the test, merely noting that Starship may have still been able to reach orbit if it had lifted off with 31 of 33 engines. By all appearances, the test was a spectacular success for SpaceX. 94% of Super Heavy's Raptors ignited on the first attempted 33-engine test. The booster, standing as tall as an entire two-stage Falcon 9 rocket with a payload fairing, then safely drained its tanks. Booster 7 suffered no apparent damage, and SpaceX hasn't removed or replaced any of its Raptor engines, potentially indicating that all 33 are healthy enough to stay on the booster for Starship's first orbital launch attempt. That in itself is a major achievement. On February 21, SpaceX's Gary Henry confirmed that Super Heavy Booster 7 and the launch pad that supported its record-breaking static fire test are in good shape. Counter to virtually all other large rockets in history, Starship's first orbital launch pad has no water deluge system, flame trench, or thrust diverter to suppress or redirect the incredible amount of energy the rocket's engines can produce. Despite that omission, the flat concrete directly below the pad appeared to survive almost 8 million pounds of thrust and brutal heat, with only minor spalling and damage. The concrete adjacent to the orbital launch mount fared less well, but may eventually be replaced with the same high-temperature fondant concrete that was added under the mount. If the launch mount and its surroundings are in good shape after experiencing about half a Starship's full thrust, it's possible that SpaceX will be ready to launch in the near future. In the meantime, SpaceX is already installing a water deluge system that will eventually make its South Texas Starship launch site much more capable of withstanding the stress of Starship tests and launches. Installing that system and building a sufficiently massive water supply will take months, however, and would likely preclude a March launch attempt, indicating that SpaceX's first orbital launch attempt will happen without it. SpaceX has, however, begun installing a final layer of shielding on Starbase's orbital launch mount. That task will likely need to be completed before the launch attempt and could take a couple of weeks. SpaceX has made a significant upgrade to the Starship boosters in the latest iteration of the craft. Once optimized, SpaceX says a Starship can launch up to 150 tons to low Earth orbit while still recovering the orbital ship and suborbital booster for reuse. CEO Elon Musk has stated that Starship reuse will eventually take hours, enabling multiple flights per day for each ship and booster, and dropping the marginal cost of each launch to just a few million dollars. 
In comparison, SpaceX's Workhorse Falcon 9 rocket uses simpler Merlin 1D engines, has just 10 of those engines to Starship's 39 Raptors, produces about 10 times less thrust at liftoff, and can launch about 11% as much payload to orbit while expanding its upper stage. Even then, Musk reported in mid-2020 that the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 launch was $15 million. Impressively low, but still a vivid demonstration of just how far Starship has to go. Simply ensuring that Starship can reach orbit at all is a major challenge. Successfully recovering Starship and Super Heavy after the fact may be an even bigger challenge and cannot be fully demonstrated until the rocket can consistently reach orbit. SpaceX won't be able to reuse Starship until it can consistently recover ships and boosters from orbital launches. And there's no guarantee that early prototypes will be reusable even if they're recovered. Until reusability is demonstrated, every Starship upper stage will be functionally expendable whether or not Elon Musk wants it to be. Musk likely means that SpaceX may or may not decide to develop a Starship upper stage custom-built for expendable missions. Such a stage would likely take Starship, remove everything extraneous, and reduce its mass as much as possible. Musk has proposed something similar before, noting that SpaceX could develop a lightened version of Starship with no heat shield or fins or legs, for expendable interplanetary launches. Further to the contrary, SpaceX's Starbase factory is already building multiple intentionally expendable Starships. Ship 26 and Ship 27 feature no thermal protection, have no heat shield tiles, and will not be fitted with flaps, making them impossible to recover or reuse. More likely than not, they will be used to test other crucial Starship technologies like orbital refilling and cryogenic fluid management. Meanwhile, SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract to use Starship to return NASA astronauts to the moon revolves around a depot ship variant that will store propellant in orbit and cannot return to Earth. The first few Starship moon landers may also be functionally expendable and only used for one astronaut landing apiece. In short, SpaceX already has extensive plans to build variants of Starship that are either fully expendable or can only be reused in orbit. In early 2023, SpaceX revealed that an expendable version of the rocket will be able to launch up to 250 metric tons to low Earth orbit in a single launch. Saturn V, the next most capable expendable rocket, could launch up to 118 tons to LEO and cost $1 to $2 billion per launch. SpaceX publicly advertising the expendable performance of Starship unsurprisingly confirms that the company is considering all of the capabilities its new launch system will offer. And Starship's expendable capabilities are significant. Constructed piece by piece over dozens of launches, the International Space Station weighs about 420 tons. Two expendable Starships could launch more usable mass to low Earth orbit, truly revolutionary if SpaceX can make Starship launches frequent and routine. Apart from upgrades to the booster, SpaceX has also made massive improvements to the Starship's engines. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with a newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed, and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines. 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. As research and development continue on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy prototype Booster 7, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. 
To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. SpaceX continues to look for more ways to make the Starship even more powerful in the future. Recently, the company announced it may have discovered a new method of rocket propulsion. SpaceX says it has created a thruster system that defies physics and has successfully tested it. The rocket propulsion system uses electrically charged gas and can achieve speeds up to 65 kilometers per second or about 135,000 miles per hour. The engine is made from super lightweight carbon fiber fuel tanks with cold gas thrusters. It doesn't use any type of propellant, meaning it does not expel any byproducts into space. Instead, the engine produces thrust by accelerating superheated plasma with magnetic fields, which also means no fumes are being expelled from combustion. These types of engines are known as electric thrusters, but they work very differently from those used in SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets. These thrusters create thrust by propelling pressurized gas, whereas electric ones produce a charged plasma that emits ions to push a craft forward. The electric engine developed by SpaceX is reportedly more powerful than conventional gridded ion thrusters and could power manned missions to Mars and beyond. It could also cut down on travel time for spacebound cargo because it requires less propellant, which can be expensive to launch into orbit. The technology is still being tested and further development is needed before it will be ready for space flight. It has been submitted for peer review and NASA experts think it has potential, at least on paper. Some say it's impossible to travel at high speeds through space, but that hasn't stopped Elon Musk from claiming he can do it. His idea is to create a light speed engine that will take us to Mars in just 70 days. Such an engine defies physics and would mean traveling faster than 186,000 miles per second. There are a few ways that we could travel at light speed, but first, we need to understand how light works. As it travels through space, every atom in its path interacts with it. This slows it down and even stops it completely if there's no matter around to pass through. Because of these interactions, light has a maximum velocity of 186,000 miles per second, meaning that's as fast as it can go through space. Since nothing can travel faster than light without breaking the rules of physics, if we want to catch up with a distant star in our lifetime, we have to find another way to get there besides traveling directly toward it. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about a new NASA spacecraft that can travel faster than the speed of light. Do you think the Starship will launch this month? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.